Good day, Paul Harvey fans. Before we get to the rest of the story, I wanted to take a moment to thank you all for listening and subscribing. In this, the technology age, almost everyone has a cell phone. You may be watching this or listening to the episode on your cell phone. Many of us complain that the younger generation is missing so much of life by staring for hours at a time at the screens on their telephones. Visit any restaurant, you'll see what I mean. When we mention this to the younger generation, we're often called grandpas. Well, this is the story about another grandpa and his dislike of telephones. Here's Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. Dave Fairchild often spoke fondly of his father-in-law, and yet he once observed that the old gentleman led a particularly isolated life. I've never known anyone, he said, who spent so much of his time alone. Lillian Grubiner very much loved the same old gentleman. She was his granddaughter, but she was always first to agree. Grandpa's preferred lifestyle was one of continual seclusion. For Grandpa was all of his life long a very private man, aloof and solitary, even as a boy. Grandma said that she'd heard stories about Grandpa when he was young. He was mostly depicted as bright and clever, although never particularly light-hearted. A friend advised him on the eve of his departure for the New World in 1870, don't get absorbed in yourself. It's one of your great failings. Mix freely with your fellows. But Grandpa never did take that advice. He always seemed proud of the fact, as he would later put it, that he'd made a great many acquaintances and very few friends. He became increasingly isolated as the years passed. He was later to admit, I feel more and more as I grow older, the tendency to retire into myself and to be alone with my thoughts. He sometimes worried Grandma. She once told him, I cannot bear to think of you shutting yourself in and holding no communication with your neighbors. Please try to come out of your hermit cell. You have lived too much by yourself. You've talked about nature and solitude and all that, but you haven't been in the crowd at all, and that's what you need. I guess the word was incommunicative. I guess that's the way you'd have to describe Grandpa, simply not wanting to be bothered. This understood, you can further understand why Grandpa so disliked telephones, for example. The telephone was an avenue of constant intrusion as far as he was concerned. He hated to be interrupted by phone calls. Even more, he abhorred overhearing phone conversations, that is, one voice without the other. Grandpa absolutely refused to have a telephone in his study at home. Nobody would dream of coming to one's house, he said, and, and demanding an audience while one was dining or bathing or sleeping. So why were people always making these preemptory interruptions by telephone? Accordingly, Grandpa would not permit a phone call to interrupt a meal. After vehement opposition, Grandpa did agree to have a phone installed in his hideaway houseboat, but this was the agreement. It was to be a single solitary line connected only with his home, which was two miles away. Nobody would be allowed to phone him except Grandma and she only in an emergency. When someone remarked that Grandpa really ought to have newer model telephones in his residence, he declared that he was always keep the old ones because they were always breaking down, which discouraged people from calling him. But then, as I have sought to explain, Grandpa was a very private man, remarkably incommunicative, considering that no man who ever lived did more to advance communication for the rest of us. I'm sure you may have pictured him otherwise. But now I'm sure you will never forget the obstinate introvert, the man who hated telephones, Alexander Graham Bell. Now you know the rest of the story. Wow, he had such a nice speaking voice. Did you see that one coming? Thank you again for listening to my channel. And as Paul Harvey would say, good day.